In this video we're going to look at how to remove a lens flare spot using After Effects. I'm starting off in Premiere and I have a clip here that has been sent to me by a friend who was concerned about this little green spot which arises because there was an extremely bright spotlight shining straight into the lens of her iPhone as she recorded this clip. Let's just play the clip. You can see straight away that this little green spot moves around uh, quite a bit um, during, during the playing of the clip. What we're going to look at is how to remove this using tracking and content aware fill in After Effects. Right click on the clip and choose replace with After Effects composition. After Effects opens up. and we'll ask you to decide where you're going to to save this and I'm just going to leave it as untitled project at the moment because we won't be needing it after this demo if I just go back to normal size here you can see now that we we have the clip here in After Effects so I'm going to go back to 200% because I want to be able to see where the where the spot is. I've just used the space bar to allow me to pan around this and I'm going to make sure that the clip is selected and add a mask to it. If we didn't have the clip selected we might be just creating a shape um, in another layer but in this case I'm going to make sure that the clip is selected. I'm going to select the ellipse tool and I'm going to draw an ellipse just around that little lens flare spot. I'm going to change the mode of that to none so that we can see where it is as we track it. Make sure that the, the mask is selected. We go into the tracker and I'm going to track position only because the spot doesn't change its size. Therefore, there's no need to rotate or to rescale the mask as it moves along. So let's just stick with position and track that as it moves forwards. I'm just using the page up key to step back a few frames to endeavor to keep the mask covering the sensor spot. So I'm just going to move it now. I'm going back to get the selection tool and just moving that mask to cover it properly and track forward again. Every time it moves to the edge of it, I'm just going to make sure that I move the mask back. Track again, watching for it going outside the mask. When it comes to doing the content aware fill, I'm going to expand the mask a little bit so that in those, at those points where it goes very close to the edge or even over the edge just slightly, we can cover that okay. This can be a little bit tedious to go through, so I'm just going to fast forward through the process to the end, not to keep you waiting. So we have tracked right through from the beginning to the end, and we've now got a mask that tracks the lens flare spot reasonably well. So now change the mode to subtract, which tells After Effects that it's going to have to fill this in when we choose the Content Aware Fill option here. So I'm going to expand this by, by about 8 pixels. That's just a guess. Um, there are several modes here for Content Aware Fill to work. Um, the mode that we're going to use is Object. That's used where an object moves around against the background. You can use surface mode where it stays linked to a surface and it, and After Effects will use a different technique in that case. Or you can use Edge Blend which uses a Photoshop kind of technique to figure out what might have been in that area. But Object is the right selection for something that moves against the background so we'll stick with that. Don't need to say anything about lighting. We're doing the whole work area so we generate the fill layer from there. This can take a while. 
So After Effects is working away and you can see that the percentage is moving up as it goes through. Again, we'll just speed the process up so that you don't have to wait for it to finish. After Effects has now finished with the whole fill process and you can see that the lens flare spot has completely disappeared and the background has been filled in perfectly around where it was. If I just move this back to fit the image in, let me just play the clip um, so that you can see how well that has removed the lens flare spot. All we need to do now is save that. So I'm going to do that with Control S and then we can close the project and go back to Premiere. And we now have the clip in, in Premiere. Sometimes Premiere plays a clip fairly slowly when it's been done in After Effects, but I'll show you how you can deal with that. And the job is done. Um, if, if you find that your After Effects clip is played slowly, what you can do is right click on the clip, or click on Render and Replace. And I'm going to um, choose QuickTime and I'm going to choose the Apple ProRes 42 Match Source. So Premiere is rendering that again. It takes it a little bit of time to do that. Let's just move forward to the end. That is now rendered and we can play the timeline fairly, fairly smoothly. Let me just play from this part a few seconds. And you can see the video is playing perfectly and we have no lens flare spot within it. If at any time you want to go back, you can replace with the After Effects composition and remove that render that we delivered. But keeping the render there will, will keep your Premiere project playing pretty fast. You can then export this and it's all ready to go. So if you find that helpful and you want to see more videos explaining how to do various things in Premiere and After Effects, then please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.